All right, welcome back. Um, now we're going to start on more complicated first order equations. And starting us off, we're going to start with exact equations. So an exact equation can be written in the following way. Uh, it's some function m that is a function of both x and y variables plus another function n that is a function of x and y times dy dx is equal to 0. Or be very careful, can also be written in this way of that same function m times dx plus that function n times dy. Uh, if you, you can see that you can get the second one by just multiplying across by dx and so be careful and when you're determining which function is the n and which function is the m um, when you're trying to solve these. So how do you solve one? The method is pretty involved but it is uh, pretty straightforward as well. You just need to make sure you go from 1 to 6 and then optionally do step 7 if needed but if you follow these steps, you should be able to get the right answer every time. Um, so first things first, you have to check if the equation is actually exact. So, and that means that m partial y is equal to n partial x. So that may uh, alarm some of you. Um, hopefully you know what a partial derivative is. At here at Tech, they introduced that to you, I believe, still in Calc 3, so 2551. If you don't know, it just means it's the same notation as this one right here of dm dy dn dx so it just means if you're doing dm dy that means look at the function m and only take derivatives with respect to y so if you were to see something like y x squared and i wanted you to do d dy that just means look at this function and only care about y so x squared in the eyes of d dy is just a constant. And so the derivative of just y with respect to y is just 1. So this would actually just equal out to be x squared. If it's a little confusing to you, I'd recommend that you um, just look at a quick tutorial about partial derivatives. We're not going to do, be doing any like really involved ones in this class. They're going to be mostly just polynomials and maybe exponentials. Um, so hopefully if you practice this, if you don't know how to do it already, you should be up to speed. Next thing is you set up this function f, which is going to be like your solution. Um, professors that I've had before have called this the potential function. Function. If your professor doesn't call that, that's okay too. Just this is kind of what you're trying to solve for at the end of the day. So keep that in mind. So this comes after if you make sure that my is equivalent to an x, right? So then after that you check. Okay, now the partial of our function f with respect to x has to equal our function m and our partial of our function f with respect to y has to equal n. So from here you can choose whichever one is easier, whichever one looks easier to integrate between these two. Um, pick that one to integrate because integration can be tricky so choosing the one with less polynomials or less complicated functions will serve you better in the end. And now when you integrate you're going to have a plus c, right? And now keep in mind, since we're integrating with two variables, it's not just going to be a plus c, which is just a constant in a, a, like, or a real number. It's not going to be a plus h of y or plus h of x. So if you were to integrate this one, right, df dx, you'll notice that when you integrate it, you'll get a plus h of y. And that's because the derivative, if you were to have mxy plus h of y, and you took the derivative with respect to x, this one would vanish, right? Because anything that's strictly a function of y gets turned into zero once you apply a partial x with it. Um, and same thing here, this h of x would be needed if you did the this uh, integration. Because anything with that's strictly a function of x, when you apply a partial with respect to y, would just vanish. So keep that in mind. Then after that, depending on which one you did, so here at step 5, take either f partial y or f partial x to determine what h of y or h of x should be. Um, take f of y if you chose this one. Because if you took partial x, then you should theoretically just get m, right? And if you took uh, partial y of this other one, oh, that is not what I want. 
if you took partial y of this one right here, then you should get n again. So depending on which one you chose, take that partial. And then, then at that point, so once you got your f, right, and then you take partial f y, assuming you solve this one right here, then you should equate it to n x y and then try to determine what your h of y or h of x is going to be. Once you got that, finally you equate the, all, everything that you just accumulated and then you set it equal to c, so their arbitrary constant. And then if it's an IVP, they'll be given an initial condition of like y of 1 equals 7 or whatever. At that point solve for that new uh, constant c. So. This may seem like a lot, but if we just do one, hopefully you'll see the process. Great. Okay. So, this one, 3x squared minus 2xy plus 2, plus quantity 6y squared minus x squared plus 3 times dy dx. Okay, it is clear that from our formula, this top one here is m, and this one is n. Right? So in order to check if it's exact, we have to check m, y. It's a really bad M. Okay. So MY has to equal what? So if you look at this M function, the partial of 3x squared with respect to Y is just 0. Okay. The partial of just 2 with respect to Y is just 0. So the only one that matters is this minus 2xy. Again, everything that isn't y is just a constant. So this minus 2x term is just a constant. So the partial of y with respect to y is just 1. So this is going to equal out to be minus 2x. OK, now we have to check nx, right? nx is going to be the partial of this function with respect to x. So again, partial of 6y squared with respect to x is just going to vanish, go to 0. Partial of 3 with respect to x, again, it's just going to vanish, go to 0. Partial of minus x squared, that's the same thing as just taking a regular derivative with respect to x of minus x squared, which would just be minus 2x. And since they are equal, good, we know that this is exact. So then the next step is to set up our um, f function, right? So, and the rules were that we set up df dx is equal to m, right? And my m, if you didn't write it down, is just 3x squared minus 2xy plus 2. And my df dy is equal to 6y squared minus x squared plus 3. Now, I think these are both pretty equivalent uh, to integrate. Um, I'm going to choose the x one just because I'm more used to taking integrals with respect to x. And so if I look at this one over here, I'll see that df is equal to three x squared minus 2xy plus 2dx, right? And so if I take the integral of this, that will go away, and then I'll get the integral of this. So integral of 3x squared with respect to x, that is just, um, what is that? That's x cubed. And then integral of this one, right? So y doesn't matter. y is just a constant. We could pull it out in front of the integral. The derivative of minus 2x is just minus x squared. So this is minus x squared times y, because y doesn't matter. And then integral of 2 is just plus 2x. And now, since we took the integral with respect to x, this is going to be a plus h of y. Okay. Good. And this, so that I keep this um, consistent, this is f of x, y. Oh, my y's are just no good. Great. 
So now that I have this, now I want to take the partial of, of this one with respect to y and then set it equal to n because they should be equivalent, right? So then from here, df dy is equal to, okay, derivative of x cubed with respect to y is just zero, so that goes away. Derivative of 2x with respect to z with respect to y is just zero. Derivative of this one with respect to y is just going to be minus x squared. And then derivative of h of y with respect to y is just going to be plus h prime of y, right? And now if we go up above, right, we saw that this has to be equivalent to n. And so our n was, let me just remind you, n of x, y is equal to 6y squared minus x squared plus 3. Okay, these two have to be equivalent. So setting them to be equal, this means that minus x squared plus h prime of y is equal to 6y squared minus x squared plus 3. Okay, good. These cancel out. And this must happen. Okay, this is a very key point. You can't have h prime of y is equal to some function of y plus another function of x has to be strictly a function of x, otherwise you know you did something wrong. Um, if these minus x squareds didn't cancel, then something must have gone wrong earlier in the problem. But since they haven't, that's good news. Um, so now, h of y is going to equal to the integral of 6y squared plus 3dy. Great. And then this integral isn't too bad to take. This is going to equal... Let's see, that is 3y, no, that's 2, right? 6 divided by 3, not 6 divided by 2. That's 2y cubed plus 3y. And then don't worry about the c, because um, we're going to set it equal to c at the end. So this is fine for h of y. So remember from up here, when we had our, uh, our f, x, y, now we found what our h of y is. So we can go ahead and use that, right? Therefore, now our solution is written as f of x, y is equal to c. So our f of x, y was x cubed minus x squared y plus 2x and then we had to add in our h of y which we solved for so that's plus 2y cubed plus 3y and then set it equal to c and there we go that is our general solution for this equation and that's all there is to it. If I gave you an initial condition, if I said y of 1 equals 2, uh, just plug in x equals 1 and y equals 2 and see what c has to equal for there. And then you'll get a like a level set of what your solution should look like. Great. So now next section we'll talk about substitution methods. And I'll break that video up into two just because there's two kind of different methods of how to solve both homogeneous equations and Bernoulli's equations. And so coming up next will be homogeneous. So we'll see you next time.